Kendi, you have thought a lot about and written a lot about concerns about the current model of youth ministry and imaginings about how that needs to change in our ministry to the young. That's undoubtedly an evolutionary process, yeah. but as a snapshot of your thinking today, how do, how do you begin to imagine where youth ministry is going to go and needs to go? Well, I guess my hunch is that um, we're, we're going to continue to um, move in the direction of trying to basically um, facilitate young people's own ministries. Uh, we've always done this to a degree, right? But that, I think that's probably going to become even more pronounced. And part of the reason for that is even people who are in youth ministry are sometimes embarrassed to call themselves youth ministers because the term youth ministry has gotten so associated with, you know, entertainment, pizzazz, cool surfer kind of stereotypes. None of those things are really true, but because of the association, I find that in my students anyway, there's a little allergy to calling them, even if they want to work with teenagers, and they'll say that, that they totally want to do that. But to be in youth ministry somehow still feels like it trivializes what it is they're about. Part of that, I think, is because they have um, recognized that a, a pitfall of youth ministry is when we treat um, kids as objects of ministry rather than agents of ministry. I mean, the point is not to, you know, have, have somebody just absorb or consume ministry. The idea is to, you know, ignite them for mission and to ignite them for discipleship and to ignite them to take what they are given and share them for the good of the world. Um, so a couple of ways that I see that um, coming down the pike, one is trying to facilitate a, a greater interaction um, between what's going on inside the church and what's going on in the community. Now, the typical way that we have done this in the past is mission trips, but most people um, I know who have a serious conversation about what counts as mission um, with teenagers, they recognize that mission trips do really good things for our students. <laughs> it's possible they don't do such good things for the people on the receiving end. There are some churches that have facilitated genuine relationships with communities, so that's different, but the one-off mission trip, I think, is not going to have the future in the next 10 years that it has had in the last 10 years. Just because people are a little bit more sensitive and a little bit more honest about, you know, wait a second, who is this really helping? So what is the alternative? You can't not do mission, right? So, well, part of what's happening is mission is being rethought in terms of what we do in our local neighborhoods. You know, that matters too. It, spend a lot of money, go someplace far away and exotic, okay, fine, or what do we do here? One of the churches that um, really worked hard to integrate kids into the community that I, I have heard about, I've not visited this church, um, they, they actually got the kids involved firsthand in the economic culture of the community. So what they did, big church, big Wednesday night program, they, they came to the conclusion that you know, kids' lives are just not being changed in the way that we would like them to be. So with considerable political guts on the part of whoever thought this up, what they did was they converted the whole youth budget into microloans that they gave to these teenagers to go out into their communities and to create a ministry, basically. So now kids were literally agents of ministry in their communities. And, you know, they had to come up with a plan and a model, and they had to figure out a way to generate enough money to put it back in the pot when they were done. But the point is that they were no, no longer receiving ministry in a consumptive model by coming to church on Wednesday nights. They were out into the community as envoys of the Christian community in the world. Um, another way that I think that we're likely to see some changes is just in more embedded forms of ministry. Um, the separated out youth group, there may always be a place for peer groups. I think that there's a lot of educational reason why that makes sense. Um, but in terms of it being the only place that we count as youth ministry, that's, I, I think that's not realistic to continue. Number one, kids do not join the same group or any group the way that they might have a generation ago. Um, number two, the economic model is such that it's hard to sustain that. So I think we're seeing more of... of ministries that are kind of embedded in existing ministries. So you might have 
um, young people who are part of an intergenerational choir. You might have um, youth who are participating in the same mission as other adults um, who are c contributing in the community. Um, in our own church, we have um, um, uh, something we call interfaith ministries. They pair up people in need in the community, like elderly people who can't drive themselves um, with a volunteer from a local church who is part of the, uh, who, you know, just shows up for an hour a week to help them run errands or whatever. And we have young people who do that um, as, as well as adults, but it's not a youth ministry. So those are the kinds of things that I think we're going to see more of. Um, it's it's going to be an interesting shift. I will tell you this one story that about a church that decided to think about youth ministry differently. And it happened as a result of the 2008 economic crash. I was at a conference and, and we were complaining that, you know, the churches were cutting youth ministry positions left and right. And, you know, I, ma and I made some crack about, well, who says you have to cut the youth minister? Why don't we cut the senior pastor and let mm -hmm. the youth, and everybody laughed. By the time I got home, I had a letter and it was from a woman who was at that conference. And what she said was, I just wanted you to know our church did that. Mm. And they decided that the ministry that was their youth pastor was doing with kids was so important that that position was the one they stayed with. And they decided volunteers could more easily do what the senior pastor was doing. And so that's how they filled the gap in that particular congregation. Anyway, there's some creativity abounds.